quit your job for the dream. Would you? Timmy with the intro. And this comes at a period of time where I have, I tend to, I put out this reel and I have noticed this. I'm not taking credit for uh, the actions that these guys have undertaken. But when I put this reel out saying, if you hate your job, you should quit and pursue what you're passionate about, go all in. That's very much in line with my personality. But both times I've done that now, I've had someone within a couple of weeks from that, that I know and have close proximity to chat to, they quit their job. Now, I'm not saying it's me. And if I had a nickel for every time that happened, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's a weird coincidence, right? Um, hopefully someone gets that uh, video sent for reference. Um, but I think that I, I wanted to add to that because the real is obviously, it's only so long. There's only so much context you can provide um, in that side of things because I think it's a very empowering thing to be able to do. The intention behind it, oh, I'm going to take a step even with that. You have to have the right intention when you do it. It can't just be like, oh yeah, I want to do the, the thing, I'll quit. Because that's one step. That's like half of what you need to do. And a lot of people will just stop there. They just quit the job. They're like, yeah, for the dream. But then they like won't put themselves in a position where they're actually pursuing the dream. So that's the second step or the other half to it that I think is really important to go into it with is understanding that quitting's half the job. Half of that is get out of an environment or a, a field that you don't want to be in so that you can essentially what you do is you're going to lose money when you do that. But what you're buying yourself back more often than not, I mean, if you've got savings in that, cool. Um, is you're buying yourself back time. So say that's 40, 50, 60 hours that you're working, even 20 hours a week at that job. When you quit, you buy yourself back all of that time. But a lot of people get stuck. So you can get very scared and unsure of what to do with your time. So the solution to that, I'd say, is get the right research and education. Talk to someone about it that knows what to do from there. So for me, my personal thing is like I've always sought out mentors. I've paid for it and I'll get into it a bit more, but I do that because it also, this is a bonus to it. It's not the only reason to do it, but it makes your situation a bit worse. Um, and a lot of the time, if you quit and you're comfortable with like, you got some income coming in, um, it's everything's okay. You know, it's not too bad. You've quit. You've got all this time now. You can chill a little bit you end up being too comfortable. And a lot of the time you'd be a l better if your situation with Liza was either a little bit better or a little bit worse. And that is one way that is part of making the situation technically a little bit worse financially because your finances dip when you get a mentor. So say you pay however much it is, like I paid $10,000 to mentors before, however much. Emptying out the savings is something that Jana and I have done before. And I talk about that. I'm not telling you that you've got to do that. I'm just saying what we've done and the intentions behind it. And also breaking down some of the some of the theoretical knowledge as to why it worked. Because we knew it was going to work that way. And so we took action in accordance with that. And it worked because we knew it would. But a big part of that is having the right intention. So you get into it not to chill. Now is your time to dedicate all of that time and effort and energy that you're going to have with the singularity of focus into the thing that you're passionate about or the thing that you want to do next, even if it doesn't end up being the thing for the rest of your life. But more often than not, if you're going to quit, it's because you know you've got some semblance of where I want to go, as well as like, oh, I don't want to work for a boss and have this kind of thing. I want to call the shots. But that is one of the difficult things about business. But one of the best things is that you are calling all of the shots when it comes to that. Because when you're calling the shots and you're in charge. It's a lot of responsibility, but also a lot of power. With great power comes great responsibility. And, and that, that really reigns true because you are in charge of running your business, but that's also where the mentorship side of things feeds into it because you probably won't know how. And you can research this stuff for free, but a mentor is going to be able to personalize and give you that guidance, which is why I recommend it, as well as the fact that that's what I did for myself. They, like, a course great. Like you can study that. It's self-paced. Um, free information, great. It's out there. But a lot of the time you don't know what you don't know. So where do you start? Oh, you could do this. You could do this first. Oh, what do I focus on right now? Should I do this, 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 this? And that 
paired with all the time that you have and the comfort that you potentially have makes it easy to put stuff off. So you want to basically put yourself in a position where it's as easy as possible. You'll naturally put in the right work or work as hard as you can. And a lot of that, so all of these things come together to put you in a situation or a circumstance where you're actually going to do the right thing, take up the right thing. What's up, guys? People coming into the live. Um, so yeah, when, when you do that, you need to also quit. Fantastic. You've got all this, this spare time back, all this time and your focus. But you've got to put that focus towards the craft, the thing that you care about. And a mentor is going to be able to help guide you through, okay, here's, here's what the next step is. Here's what you should look into. Here's what you do from here, as well as making the situation one where you're primed to actually take action. And you want to ride that momentum. Like, obviously, it's more ideal if you can do that. It's most ideal. And I think that a lot of people tend not to be able to deal with the rift sometimes. Like I have so much time now and so much responsibility on me. So much of what happens next in my life is going to be dictated by me. I don't have a boss to be able to put that uh, blame onto subconsciously, externally. Not that we do that maliciously, but it's just something normal to do. It's like I call all of the shots now. It's like, cool, I call all the shots now. I, I call all the shots now. So you have to understand that you need to do things to put yourself in a position to excel, to do well from that and not just quit and then that's it. Because there is that second step. There is the, the other side to success, which is actually stepping into what you want to do. And I've seen it happen before because a lot of guys, they'll start to panic financially. They're like, oh, uh, I'm getting a bit scant now. I've got to pay for rent and that. Use that. You have to double down in those situations. The point of you leaving that job quitting was to gain all that time back but if you're spending that time panicking and then starting to look into another job because the finance is dipping which you expected then you have to realize that you're going to end up in the same situation it's the cycle that i've observed and seen a lot of guys jump into is where they're like oh oh no finances after a, f a few weeks of not being completely all in you're kind of like oh what have i done panic a little bit and instead of filling that uh that space with positive action in the direction that you want to go they fill it with self-doubt and it builds and it snowballs and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then you end up worse off because you didn't jump all into your business like how you were planning to but you're also financially worse off because you know you still got to pay for stuff that's how that's how life works but you have to realize if you had have used that time and primed yourself set yourself up to go all in and build this thing up you can see excellent results within a couple of weeks the idea with a lot of stuff is the first 20 hours is where you see the biggest um, the biggest skill jump. So if you can get those 20 hours, that's perfect. And I mean, if you're working 40 hours a week, that's half a week that you've you've gained back and gotten that. And then uh, I know they say 10,000 hours for that mastery, but you've bought yourself back essentially 40 hours a day, 50, 60 hours uh, a week, not a day, <laughs> 40 hours a week, 40 to 60 hours a week. Even if it's like 30, 20 hours a week, however much time. And you've got more effort and energy. So you've got more energy and focus to be able to put towards the things that you care about. So you've got to take advantage of that situation. So I'm just putting these on another chair because I'm getting sweaty talking about this. <laughs> um, yeah, make it so that you are able to fill the void with what you want to do. And that's where a mentor or a guide or something like that comes in. But also you can use all of that initial time to be like, okay, who's the right mentor? What's the right course? Maybe do all the research stuff. Maybe you're someone that can do it yourself. And if that's you, use that time. You have to dedicate it. But you've got to get into it with the right intentions and not, not back down. Those moments where you're like, oh man, this is way harder than I expected. You've got to double down if you actually want to make it using the thing. Because... The fact of life is everyone goes through that to be successful. At some stage or another, you have to go through something like that. And a big thing that I find is off for a lot of people is their expectations. They were like, I knew it would be hard, but I didn't know it would be this hard. If you just set the expectation, tell yourself in those moments, because some of you might be in those moments right now. Tell yourself, this is what hard is supposed to feel like. And I expected it to be hard. Oh, 
okay. So then there's not that disparity between your expectations and reality. You marry the two and be like, okay, maybe my expectations were wrong before. But now I marry the two together and that will very quickly like temper down those feelings, that self-doubt, that panic, that anxiety, and then being able to move in spite of those things or with those things as well. Because courage isn't the absence of fear. It's moving in spite of fear. And that is a big thing. You have to realize that that's required. The anxiousness, that's good. It also means that you're doing something worthwhile. You're doing something scary that most people, most other people wouldn't be willing to do because it's too hard. They value security too much. But you're going out there, you're making your own security. You're, you're forging your own path because you care about this thing so much or you care about a certain lifestyle that you want or an ability to have a certain impact. Remember those things. And then even if you feel the self-doubt, because you will, it is a skill to be able to water it down or overcome it. And the best way to overcome it is by taking, like I said before, positive action in the direction of your goals or the direction that you want to take your life. So going like, hey, yeah, okay, I'm feeling self-doubt. I expected it to be hard. Now you've done a couple of things there. You've got the beliefs right inside. Okay, so this is this is common. Like this is what most people experience. Now what you can choose is what your reality is, what becomes normal for you. And if you choose for that to be, I'm going to act regardless. I'm going to tuck the self-doubt and that into my pocket and I'm going to keep moving forward and excel as a result of this. Put all of that time, effort and energy that I've just gotten myself back into the craft itself. You'll see massive returns, but it, it's just a hurdle that you've got to navigate sometimes that, oh no, have I made a mistake? And everyone has that self-doubt. I've had it before, but the thing is just being like, okay, as soon as it comes up, okay, don't play it out. Just act in accordance because you theoretically know these principles will work out. Okay, I can make money using anything. So I can do it using my passion. I've just got to develop the skill. Now I have the time and the focus to be able to develop the skill. Okay, so knowing I can make money, that's taken care of. Knowing necessarily how to do that, mentoring, free resources online, courses, whatever it is. Um, talking to people um, that you know that have done it. Fantastic. That's taken care of. You can do that. Um, and... Then, so it's just like, okay, use the time, use the passion, use the energy, use the footwork that you have and make something of it. Don't just panic and sit there. Otherwise, you just create more of that situation for yourself. So that's one of the big things there is I think it's very admirable and I I get stoked when people do it for themselves because they, you make that choice for yourself uh, to, to actually quit and make, make something of your life, do something bigger. It's just... You have to do more as well. You have to take the the other steps as well, the harder steps that most people won't take. Maybe they'll quit. Most people won't do that. But then most people that do that won't actually take the next steps, go all in. And one of the best ways I honestly feel is because you'll have some semblance of money or, you know, you can always find the money for something that's valuable enough. Find the right mentor. I like this is my recommendation. Find the right mentor. And heed what they say, take action in accordance with all of that, because they're going to be able to personalize if it's the right mentor, personalize all of the advice that you get um, and cater it to the situation you're in. Because uh, another issue is like that information overload. That's the thing with free resources. There's so much out there. What do I actually take in? What do I start? Hey, maybe this doesn't apply to my context, but a mentor, the, uh, the right mentor, a good mentor will be able to sift through all that information based on the context, your context, be like, do this. Here's one, here are one or two applicable things. Focus on this for now. When they're done, let's do the next thing. So that way it's not like a huge mountain that you have to conquer all by yourself. You've literally got someone saying, okay, take one step there. Then you take that step. Okay. Now step there. And then you go next step, next step, next step. And by doing that, having that guidance initially, you'll have walked the path and you'll develop the skill yourself whilst knowing, yes, this is going to work. And before you know it, you'll be at the top of that mountain. And you'll be on to the next mountains and all of that. But there a good mentor is able, ha, will have the skill to distill that information to you right time in the right way at the right place. Yeah. So that is something that is really important to embrace. That being a huge part of the journey. What's up, Dred? A huge part of your success is taking up the next step and 
more often than not, it's seeking out actively the right people. And mentors tend to be those people um, or coaches, whatever you want to call it. Coaches, mentors. I feel like mentor has that association with like free mentoring and that. But the thing is like you need it to sting. This is part of this making the situation a tiny bit worse for yourself in some regard. If it stings your like your wallet financially and that, then you can also be like, okay, I've paid for this as well. There's a subconscious thing. I paid for this. I'm going to value it. I better make the most of this. So you can do these little things or like, yeah, do these things that have small effects, but they gear you up to just naturally take action, which is like the most important thing is the action. Even if you don't have all the beliefs, all the little things, the minutia of it all sussed out, the action is number one. But these are things that just from what I've noticed, you take that side of things up. Have someone that knows your situation, how to improve it, how to get to where you want to go and just go all in on that because you're guaranteed to succeed if you do that. If you go in with the right intention and you decide that I'm going to make this happen for myself, I am going to become that person. And because when you decide to make that investment and let it sting you a little bit financially in your wallet or that one, you develop a better relationship with money, but you're also making a choice, a conscious choice. Who am I going to be in this moment? I could be someone who's very scarce, who's very scared of, oh, I can't let my money get too low because then you're pretty much telling yourself you don't trust yourself to make more money using the thing, which is not a good start to actually building a life based on a business that is making money from your efforts. You're telling yourself, okay, I don't trust myself to do that. So if you're willing to empty it out, I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you're willing, I'm just saying that I've done that. If you're willing to do that, you're making a conscious, deliberate choice. Yes, I've made that money before. I can make it again. Now I'm going to make it using something I'm passionate about. And that is going to completely change the direction of my life that I want to go in. So in doing that, you'll actually end up becoming, just choosing to become the right person who is guaranteed to succeed because it's not about the investment itself. This is what Yana says. It's not about the investment itself. It's about who you are when you decide to make that investment. That is going to dictate what you do. And it's like who you are when you decide to quit your job. Who you are when you decide what to do with that space that you've created for yourself. You need to be able to stare into that void of space and responsibility that you've given yourself and time. And just be like, who do I want to be? And the the coolest thing is, it's your choice. So if you choose that, Just do the right things from there. And hey, there's nothing directly in this necessarily for me because I just want to see as many people as possible succeed. And this is just what I've noticed. This is what I've observed. This is what I've done myself like two and a half years ago. Now is the first time we emptied our last $4,000 out for a $12,000 course um, and mentorship to to start making this side of things happen. That's, that's when I first did it and I knew it would work. I had some of this theoretical backing and over that time I've gotten to see who rises, who falls outside of ourselves. What, cause both Yana and I have done it and we've done it together and we've, I've seen people have the desire and I've seen people achieve that desire, but I've also seen people have the desire cause everyone's got the similar desires and then not make it. And These are the difference between the people that fall by the wayside and the people that make it. It's the investment into yourself by quitting, having that time being like, I believe I can do this. What's up, Ben? But it's also the investment into yourself to choose to be the right person by investing in yourself, whether that's just a time thing or if it's financial. Obviously, if it's financial, then there's going to be both. And when you do that, then you can change the direction of your life by making that choice, being like, okay, I'm going to get the mentorship, but I'm not going to be like, okay, this person's going to figure it all out and solve it all for me. I'm going to put in the work. They're going to tell me where to step. I'm going to step. They're going to tell me how to take the next step. I'm going to take it. And you just have to keep doing and doing and doing and doing. And all of those things combined will put you in a direction where you're like, you know what? You're living a super fulfilling life because that's the reason you would have gotten out of the job in the first place. I'm not fulfilled. I don't really enjoy doing this. I want to make something of my life. I want to do something that I'm passionate about, something that is a struggle because there's like everyone wants to struggle. We all crave that, but struggling for something that is, yeah, struggling for something that is worth struggling for, striving for something that we care about. That's the ideal because we all want to push 
We want to work hard. We don't want life to be empty and meaningless. We all have that passion, but you have to take that chance on it and actually make it happen. If you've taken one of the steps, don't all of a sudden... It's kind of like when people like cliff diving, for example. You have to commit because you can take the step off the ledge, but if you bail out, you're going to hit the rocks and then oh, you hurt yourself, um, that side of things. But this is part of it. So quitting the job is like taking the step off, but quitting the job and diving all the way in, committing, sending it all the way, you'll realize that the, uh, if you're afraid to fall, you fall because you're afraid. And you allow that fear to dictate your actions by bailing out. But if you go like, okay, I'm jumping into the water off of this cliff. I am making this happen. That's the second step of the taking, taking the action, getting a mentor, finding the right people, cultivating that for yourself. Because we all want to have that life that is fulfilling. Work that fulfills us, that fuels us, that is like the passion that you can feel in your giblets. The difference is... You need to take the right action in order to get there. And from what I've noticed and observed over the years and studied, I've kind of just taken all of that and laid out the, the right path. What I've seen, of course, like you can do things your own way, but there are principles that are abided by in that, that regardless of maybe something looks slightly different for you, those principles are abided by um, in every success story you have seen and will see. There are very, like, I don't think there are any really exceptions to that. But if there are, there are exceptions that prove that that is the rule. Yeah. So the exceptions don't negate the rule. The exceptions prove the rule in that sense. This, these are just the steps for success. That's what's required for the dream. To achieve it and to make it happen, Captain. So I'll leave you with that. If you need a hand, get in the direction of like, where should I go? Who's a good mentor for this kind of thing? feel free to message me, shoot me a message. Um, I can point you in the right direction, whether that's me or someone else. Um, I'm pretty easy. I just want to see as many people succeed as possible, which is why I want to put this out there so that you have tangible steps. Use these principles and then regardless of what industry you're in, whether it's coaching, whether it's videography, whether it's editing, whether it's personal branding, whether it's a clothing brand or something like that, whatever it is, those are the principles that are going to apply. That's how you guarantee success by choosing to be the right person. And that's how you find the right people to be able to guide you and make sure that success is as solid and as fast as possible. Because we don't want to be slow for the sake of it. That's all for this one. Catch you guys on the flippy flip. Hope it helps. Keep it all gravy, baby. Bye.